I'm going to do a video on how to photograph small pets. In my case, it would be my two dogs. Things that I've come to learn and uh, what makes it easier. A few things about lighting. Uh, on the uh, left, you see Charlie. And on the right, you see Moose. They're both girls. Now, what you're seeing here is actually my Lazy Boy chair, in which I just threw a covering on. To uh, so when I do pictures, I can come up with a different theme or different color, and I'm not always using the same, well, the same color as the chair. In the past, I've used the background uh, with backdrop stands, and then I'd put them uh, in in that uh, area. But then as I backed up, they had no boundaries, so the dogs would move around. And uh, you could work with it, but it just made it difficult to get good pictures. That's when I decided to use the chair, because as you can see, you've got the armrest on both sides in which to contain the animal. And um, they, have, they have very limited range, and so you can control them so much easier. Obviously, this idea only works with small animals because of the small area you have in here. It's, it's, you, you couldn't put a very large dog. So again, if you have a small pet, this works excellent. So as I said earlier, I just use some kind of a covering, which you see here. And uh, this I got from Walmart. They, they come up with these. They work out excellent. In fact, here's one that I bought just the other day. Uh, they're 50 by 60 inches. Obviously, you'll, you'll need whatever covers the size of your chair or couch you might be using. But what I like about them is, in this particular case, as the one you're seeing now in the chair, got a dog theme. And this was only $2.50. I've also bought blankets, if they're the right color. Uh, sometimes I've uh, gone and bought uh, fabric. You can get that fairly cheap. Again, Walmart, just get whatever size you need. If you're looking for a theme for a various holiday, uh, it works perfect. The beauty of this is you don't need fancy equipment. That little small Nikon Cool Picks that you see on the left takes excellent pictures. In fact, the video that I'm shooting... Um, for really all my YouTube videos so far is just an updated uh, Nikon Cool Picks, and uh, I just shoot in 720p. I don't go any higher, even though I could. But um, so any camera will do when you want to photograph your pet. The main thing is just know your camera, know how to uh, manipulate the camera. Now, what do I mean when I say manipulate your camera? Well, the camera that you see on the uh, right, the Nikon F3, which is a film camera, and any of my other cameras that I have, uh, be they uh, digital SLRs or the uh, film SLRs, uh, <clears throat> they're highly, uh, you, can, you can use them in manual or you can use them uh, automatically, but I like to use everything manually. I have more control over it and I use... Uh, uh, light meters that uh, handheld light meters that I can use to uh, check the lighting ratios so even with this camera it does not allow for manual overrides per se when it comes to exposures but there still is a way to do that and I'll show you how to do that and in which you can um, adjust the exposure because sometimes in certain lighting situations you do not get the optimum from an automatic camera. The best way to override an exposure with one of these fully automatic cameras is right here and every camera will be different your plus or minus that's your exposure and so as you see over here it's your exposure compensation okay plus is overexposing there's this particular one will do two stops over and it'll do a third increments, third stops. That's a one and a third stops over, one full stop. Uh, that's uh, two thirds of a stop over, 
one third of a stop overexposed and then properly exposed one third underexposed of a stop two thirds of a stop under and a full stop and so on so the beauty of these digital cameras is that it's not like film where you really had to be precise and you really learned a lot with this particular thing all you've got to do is take a picture and if you're not sure take a picture in each one of the exposure values plus or minus and uh, you're sure to come out with something good and this way you can control the nuance of the lighting that's what I like about that because when you take a picture it's all about the lighting now when I talk about proper exposure that's what the camera thinks what the proper exposure is and uh, depending how the light the light meter within the camera because you can set them for different things today with these cameras you can set them for various you know uh, night light uh, close-up and different lighting situations tungsten so you can control that but camera meters are not infallible and there are situations that uh, strong backlighting snow bright snow so you still want to have some control and again like I said the beauty of these automatic cameras or the digital media I mean is that you can see your picture instantly and you can control it so that's that's a good thing something else that is nice certainly not a necessity but uh, is nice to have is a tripod this is a small uh, carbon fiber tripod that I have that I use for portability I've got tons of them for different things but the good thing with the tripod is that it allows you to concentrate on the picture concentrate on getting the picture framed and when you're holding the camera with a tripod it gives you more uh, more latitude to work with the pets and get them set and you know that when you get you've got them ready to go just a matter of shooting shooting the picture with the shutter release and you don't have to go back now and waste valuable time getting the uh, scene framed because dogs move quick pets move quick and you want to be able to get everything at a moment's notice now I'm going to use this black camera here to show you something I want to talk about lighting and the importance of lighting. Remember, a picture is nothing more than using light and manipulating light. So one of the best things you can do for taking pictures is do not use your on-camera flash. Do not. Whether it's a um, point-and-shoot camera or you've got an expensive digital SLR, unless you've got some light modifiers for it you're always best to shoot with the natural light that is available now if you were using studio lights like you see that I have here but they're just resting on the arm of the chair normally you don't do this they'd be up on stands uh, either short or tall you'd have either umbrellas uh, soft boxes whatever the uh, thing may be and um, you'd have them set up so you had the proper lighting ratio uh, any reflectors everything would be set up and uh, then you could uh, use those and this would be the ultimate way but not many people uh, would have this kind of a setup so let's take a look at this uh, fleece thrill that I showed earlier that I was using take a look at the highlights that you see okay that is from a picture window I have a large picture window to the left of the frame of field of view so that is the source of light coming in I also have another one to the south that if I want to open it I can and again that's how we manipulate light but there's plenty of light coming in here now so the one curtain open is just fine something to remember the larger the window the, the light the larger the light source okay in this case we're going to call it the window because if you don't have a, 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 a soft box that you're shooting through with um, studio lighting we're going to be talking about a window here the larger the light source the softer the light will be the smaller 
the harsher the light. So in this case, we have nice soft light. But I just wanted to show you that in that reflection, that's reflecting that big amount of light coming in from the window. And that's what you should be doing when you choose an area to shoot from with natural lighting. Is Obviously, you have to work with what you have, but always try to get the largest light source possible. Now, I'm going to close the curtain here to, that, uh, to the um, left of me that I talked about. So I want you to watch the lighting. Now did you notice that? So now we've even changed the quality of the light because we no longer have the daylight coming in but we have kind of a mix of the curtain lighting and uh, which will act, uh, they're, they're minor, medium, darker blue panels. But now watch this. I'm going to open up just one of the panels. And already you can start to see how the shadow and the back side of that camera is harsh. Okay, now watch how that changes. So as I've opened up more of the panels, you have more light, shadows change. So as you can see, light is important, and the quantity of light and the quality of light is important to every picture. Now I spoke about when you modify light, one of the ways is to throw light back into a picture. So I've got this white sheet of paper, 8.5 by 11, um, nothing more than that, and I'm going to look at the shadows. See that? See the shadows on the top right of the fleece throw, and then on the top right of the camera housing? See how when I use this to throw light back and forth the shadows will soften and uh, it's not quite as pronounced now because there's plenty of light but if you had a lot of backlighting you could use a large white cardboard to put light into a uh, shadow area and give it more illumination. Okay, and just another example of uh, manipulation of light. I have a somewhat daylight balanced light source here. And as you can see, as I move it around, you can see how the, the play of shadows. You can get a whole new feel for a picture just by modifying the light that the subject is receiving. And this is what they do in studios when you have studio lighting and your various uh, shoot through umbrellas or bounce umbrellas or soft boxes. That's what they're doing is creating the picture by manipulating the light and one other thing um, always have the indirect light like you have from windows and you should never let the direct sun come in through the window onto your subject it will create very harsh shadows unless of course you use some kind of a modifying by using a white sheet a white piece of cardboard and throw light back into the subject but you're probably better off just to stay away from that and another thing the reason I state to stay away from on-camera flash units is because the light is very directional and harsh so just like the light coming in from the window with the Sun it's very harsh and very directional and and the shadows are very hard 
and uh, dark and it just doesn't make for a pleasant picture. So getting back to the subject at hand, how do we keep the dogs in one spot? Well with the chair. Now and you also want to get them to where they're alert. So I've tried several things. You can use a squeaky toy. Treats are another thing. I'm using a little treat thing here. I shake it. It alerts them. And I can get their attention. If I need to, I can push them back where they belong. Get them, get them back. And, um, you know, take... Another thing you're going to do is just take a bunch of pictures because as you see here, you've got the dogs that are moving, they're yawning, their their head, their ears. So you want to work with them and you've got to take a lot of pictures to make sure that you get get a good one. So here I am on my computer, my Photoshop program and um, if everything comes together you get a good picture and uh, it's just about uh, again getting their attention keeping them confined and using props here you can see I used a prop of a uh, dog uh, a dog bed for my Christmas shot that I took and uh, everything worked out it's just about timing it's about being ready. Again, the importance of a tripod. Could not have done this without a tripod. I had to just continually shoot to get this picture. Another good thing with uh, photo editing software is uh, if you're not on a tripod and for some reason the focus is off a little bit because of a lot of movement and, and such or just if the focus is off just a hair focused on the wrong thing with these automatic automatic cameras if it, the so, focus is not bad you can use the sharpen tool in whatever uh, video or photo editing program you have the sharpen tool can work wonders if it's just a little out and it can really make it look sharp Another very important thing to remember is when you're taking pictures, leave some room. I know a lot of times you might want to just, oh, this is a great, uh, I, I like the uh, I like the composition. I like the way it's uh, composed. Get back a little bit further, okay, so that you can crop a picture. Okay, I'm going to use the crop tool here so that if you need to crop a picture, to size it to a certain you know 8 by 10 4 by 6 whatever you can do that as you can see what I've done here so never get so tight to your subject that it does not allow you to crop it to the proper or format it to the proper uh, picture that you might want to print because depending on what uh, resolution you're shooting at, it may not have the same aspect ratio for a given print size. So, so I always make sure I leave enough room around my subject, even though it might not look framed properly, I leave enough room so that I can go into my video editor, as you see here, and do a crop. And then uh, I have a plugin that allows me to crop it to a given size. So again, every or given you know eight by ten four by six you know whatever I can either use the pixels or I can use the inch whatever I want so every program you use a uh, video a picture editing program will be different that's something that only you can determine but just give yourself enough room latitude around the picture so that uh, when the final picture is done you can crop it to the proper size